Let's go. Welcome to Don Cherry's Grapevine Podcast. We want to wish everybody a happy Easter. We're recording this Sunday morning. With I'm here with Cindy and Dad, and uh, we'd like to thank our sponsors, Spread.ca, First Nation-owned online casino and sportsbook, tailored to Canadians. Sign up now and enter the promo Grapes, and they'll match your deposit up to $500. That's a pretty good deal. It is. And then you get, uh, for your first sports bet, you get 25 bucks. So if you're a Blue Jay fan or a baseball fan, you can bet on baseball. And you get 25 uh, spins on the big wheel for some big bucks. I'm asking you, Tim, as we hear here now, we, you mentioned the Blue Jays. Does uh, the first baseman, we won't mention his name. What's his name? The Vlad? Vlad Jr., we call him. I say, I say by uh, July, he'll be a DH. I think he's trying hard on first base. Can't play third base. He got a good third baseman, and um, but he cost he, him, he cost him the game. He cost him the game, the second game for sure. His I mean, foot comes off the bag. He does the stretch good, but unfortunately, his foot comes off the bat twice. And I say he'll be a DH by July, and he can hit. There's no doubt about that. And he lost a lot of weight, but. Um, Blue Jays are pretty good, though. They look pretty good. And when he gets Springer back, it's going. I follow them <laughs> that close. Okay, go ahead, Tim. So, well, I think the big news today is uh, in hockey, and it's not very good news, is no. the Vancouver Canucks, was it 14 or 16? 14. Players have come down. Well, they don't have COVID. They call them their in-COVID protocol, yeah. which means they might have been exposed to somebody that had it or that they have or they've tested positive for it. Now, what happens if this is in the playoffs? What happens now? What happens if they go as if they're, they go into the playoffs and 14 guys, what do they do? Yeah, I mean, they, they said it, it'll be, you know, at least two weeks until they uh, until they think they're back playing. And they until don't they, even know if they're going to they don't even know if they're going to get all their games in. Yeah, it's going to be it's a. Uh, well, it's it's well, it, like that, but that that's why they're talking about it might have to go back into a bubble for the yeah. playoffs. I mean, because you just you know, what if you're what if they're up three games to none on Toronto, and all of a sudden everybody gets COVID and they got to cancel the game? In, yeah, I, I like. What are they going to do? Well, that's not what that's not my problem. I don't have. But when I like to talk about, uh, I like to thank Ron McLean and Hockey Night in Canada for doing a thing on Bobby Schmatz and. Uh, I looked up his record, uh, and I keep saying he's got 27 goals, tw- 26 goals. He had 27 goals. He had 61 points, uh, and um, he couldn't get a job the next year. 61 points! You know, who? You know, again, I think we talked about this a little bit last week, and um, um, unfortunately, it was, it was a sad moment in the Cherry household, Cindy, when we heard that, that Bobby passed away last week. On his birthday, mm-hmm. and, his, his buddy, and his buddy held his hand. Uh, Jerry Sillers, driller, I call him driller. <laughs> I remember he used to be, he was in Rochester. He had a pull groin the whole time. He tried to come back too early. Uh, driller tried to come back too early. But anyhow, uh, Bobby yep. passed away on his birthday. And um, on, on that year, you said he had 27 points, or uh, 27 goals. 27 not po- goals. Points, goals. The only guy that had more goals on that was Tiger Williams, had 35. Imagine that, how tough the league was. <laughs> Well, Tiger would they didn't want to touch Tiger because Tiger be in front of the net. I mean, he could throw him pretty good, and Tiger was a pretty colorful guy. Remember, he came. Remember, it was a joke. He, he came, and they said, if you happen to get a goal, I want you to ride your stick. What right, was right. That was uh, when when Tiger Williams left Toronto. It was a big deal because he was. Like, he the, was really popular. The three fan favorites were Lanny, Daryl Sittler, and Tiger Williams. I, and I think Tiger Williams. Be, he was more popular than anybody. So he left. He went to Vancouver, and Bobby Schmott said to him, "We're going back to Toronto, and if you win or if we score, you have to ride your stick like a broom, like you know." That's why your, he didn't want Schmott to around. And he said, "You have to, you 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 got to go to center ice and like ride it like a horse, and then on your whipping the horse." So he scores, and if you see if you see um, if you Google that, or you go on YouTube and say you know Tiger Williams goal versus Toronto, you'll see Bobby Schmatz point to center ice. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, he points to center ice, and, and Tiger puts a stick between his legs, pretends like he's riding a horse. And, yeah, and, 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 and that's probably on Hockey Night in Canada too on TV, right? Yeah, it was the, Saturday night. Oh, on oh a Saturday yeah, night. I, I saw that a few times too. Boy, I mean, he couldn't remember do that when, in our club. Remember when? Uh, Ty Domi used to do that. 
and you told him to Ty Dami used to ride his Ty stick. Ty did that once. Once, too. and then you said, help. and you Come were the on. only. Pardon me. The only guy who would say to, to Ty. To yeah, that. I mean, you were the only guy that could say, "What are you doing?" What do you like? What do you like, Ty? You know. Yeah, no one else would tell him to knock it off. Well, maybe Leanne would, but you, you, you and her could That's tell him what to do. But the other thing that was uh, was nice again about, about Bobby Schmutz was uh, uh, Don Brennan in the Ottawa oh, Sun. Oh, Don Brennan did a great job on him. And, did a, did a good article, and uh, with the Ottawa Senators Jake Batherson, who got two points on Saturday night against Montreal. Yeah. Nicknamed he he had his nickname is Schmatzy because he saw yeah. A, yeah. Well, which, you know, out of a clear blue sky, uh, Drake Batherson, a good hockey player, he's having a great year. And he said uh, he wanted to be called Schmatzy. Oh, <laughs> I don't know if Schmatzy even knew that. I probably did know it. Oh, yeah. And um, yeah, well, you know, the here's, and um, we'll talk a couple about, you know, I, I remember uh, he, Bobby, he had a lot of injuries, Bobby Schmatzy. Oh, he did, boy. And I remember one, and I think this is why you were really against uh, the icings, that he yeah. was racing for an icing, and, and, he slipped. and he slipped, and he fell feet first into the boards and broke his heels. And the fireman, remember a fireman yeah, said yeah. to you, the only time he's ever seen injuries like that is, or I think it was the doctor actually said it, the only time that he saw an injury like that is people jumping out of second-story windows for, to get away from a fire. Wow. And what was the guy guy from Detroit? I, I, I remember the guy. What was his name? Uh, the guy from Detroit. Remember you told me the, his, his name? No, no. Pat Peak. Pat Peak. That's the name. Pat Peak. This is a true story, Cindy. This is a true story. This is hard to believe. He had, had a little daughter. And uh, he said, now, we're going to start watching Coach's Corner. We're living in Detroit, I think he was. And uh, yeah, and he he remember he 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 skated. He tried to skate with uh, two broken uh, on an icing too. Yeah, he, he raced for an icing, and yeah. I don't think I think somebody kind of somebody tripped him. Somebody tripped him, and he and uh, broke, broke broke both, both his, ankles, and and he had to have steel in him. So anyhow, he said th- this is after he retires. Eh? So he had um, he has his little daughter, and his little daughter can't sit up. It, that's how small she is. He says, "Okay, we're going to start watching Coach's Corner." And and he sets her up, and he sits down, and I do a thing on Pat Peak. Oh, what are the odds? <laughs> yeah, on what that? are the odds on that? And I, I showed him uh, breaking his heels, and uh, and it, you know on the icing and that. And I did a story, and Pat Peak never was the same, and all that and everything. And he never was the same. He was a pretty good hockey. Well, player. I think he retired after that. He did. Well, he had, couldn't skate. So, yes. what was the injury that that uh, Schmatzy had when he had that cast? Remember, he was over at the house by the pool. Scott what? Garland. I'm. I'm. Uh, honest, I can't. I'm. Tr- but off the top of my head, I think it was guy, a guy named Scott Garland who was killed in a car accident. By the way, if I remember, and he hit him, and he just and he cut it. Was cutting along the blue line. Um, you know, cut, that cut in. And Schmatzy's in the leg, and, and he tore the, tore the ligament right off his uh, thing, and they stapled it on. And he, and you know, when when he was over at the house, at our house, someday we must talk. Full, about this. Well, we're there. There was a full a full cast from his ankle right up. Well, to no, it, 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 Cindy, it was kind of a cast. It was like a uh, he had a an ace bandages on. Oh yeah. And uh, he was on crutches. Yeah, he was on crutches, and it just sweat, and I think he got staph infection. And it oh. just, and he felt, memory mosquitoes were coming. Remember what happened? I was going to say that. Remember we were all we were in that in that pool in Boston and we kept saying, we're pushing our luck being out here at 6.30. The mosquitoes are going to come. And they were because, monsters. Because, boy, they were huge back then. And you could hear them coming. And you could hear them. And the wind died and they would cover you, these mosquitoes. Yeah, and I remember we all, that. Do you remember that? We ran into yeah. the house and Bobby was going with his crutches and, and he, he fell. fell. And he's crawling to the house, and he's going, "Help me, help me!" And he's being attacked by these mosquitoes. And no way we were getting out. And he goes, "I can't believe you people wouldn't help me." And, it and, was, and he got staph infection. And, yeah, I uh, remember that. Yeah, remember the, it's right. like it, it was all it was all blown up. I remember, I remember he um, he was a doctor. He was in t- the training room, and his 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 knee was like the size of a grapefruit. Like it was right. just it was all. And so they had to stick a needle in to drain, to, oh, yeah. to drain it out. So the doctor said, the doctor said to him, he goes, okay, we're going to do it on three. So get ready. We're going to do it on three. I don't know why I was standing. I think me and Craig Cheevers, and you know, we're watching this, you know. And nice. So they go, so he goes, we got to drain it. So the, uh, he goes, one, 
two, and he he sticks it in on two, right? <laughs> oh. And Schmatzi just about hit the roof, and they drained it out. And then I remember after the, he said to the doctor, "Don't ever do that again." <laughs> <laughs> no, my nurse, but, you know, I had, I had my knee drained, left knee knee drained. Now that I think of it, I went to the doctor, and Doctor Lordy, I remember now. And my leg, leg was swollen. I had water on the knee. They call it water on the knee. And he drained it, but he didn't. He, he had a big needle <laughs> inside the needle. And at, it wasn't out. And he says, okay, stand still. So I'm laying there. And he, you know when you're sick in the hospital, you have that thing that you, you put down. He put that next to my knee. And he left the needle in there. He left the needle in there. And I'm looking down at it. And he got and pushed all of, out through the needle. And it come out through the needle into this little thing, and I, I was, <laughs> I, I was, uh, and I was, uh, I was out a long time. But anyhow, but I remember that was part of my childhood. I mean, after every game that you played and yeah, and practiced, you would come home, and my job was to put ice cubes in mom's yeah. tea towels, and they, uh, and that was that was quite the thing. You had to ice your knees all the time. Well, I used to block shots. I used to be like a dumbhead, block shots, and so. We're saying goodbye to Schmatzi. I got, well, just a, a oh, couple. Oh, you got some more injuries. I got a couple more. I mean, I, I think that, um, you know, a lot of people were, we were talking that he was the straw boss. And, and uh, so, and people still don't know kind of what a straw boss was. But you were saying that every time somebody had an issue oh. on the team that didn't want to, and there were some guys who just didn't want to come and talk to you. They were shy or whatever or like that. Well, I didn't want to talk to the coach and, and Schmatzi was like the, and that's what that's why I, I talked again. I, I'm repeating, but I, Harry Neal. I said, Harry, we're having a pint one time, Pop. And I said, Harry, why didn't you want Schmatzi back? He said, I couldn't stand him. Yep. <laughs> I couldn't stand him. He said, everybody that was having a tough time with me, he'd come in the office. And I think at that time, I was having a tough. He was having a tough time with Dennis Kearns. Remember the defense with Dennis yep. Kearns? Yep. Yeah. And Schmatzi was in all the time, and he says I did, I couldn't put up with him. Funny, so, I, but I remember that. But one of the classic one was uh, he came in to talk to you about. Oh, Gar- but Gary, Gary Doak. <laughs> Gary Doak from Godrich, Ontario. He was a little strange guy. <laughs> you know, Gary Doak. When I first went there, he was injured all the time, and the reason he was injured all the time, he had the heart of a lion, and he'd run out and hit guys, weighed two hundred pounds, and he weighed one hundred and eighty. He was always hurt. So, in front so, of you, guy, so mm-hmm. you're the only coach that told your defenseman, don't hit guys. I said, I don't want you to hit another person. Well, that's my job. I said, do not hit another person. And I don't think he ever got injured after that. <laughs> but he was running out. Well, I mean, he, how many coaches, you say, how many coaches would tell a defenseman, don't hit anyone? Well, he weighed 100, about 180 pounds, and he's trying to hit guys 200. He was always hurt. And him and Ricky Smith. And yeah. Ricky Smith. And, uh, well, you know, just a little bit off talk. You, you could do that nowadays because of the equipment. You couldn't back then because he, he hardly wore any equipment. Know, like, you know, they just like shoulder pads. And, and, and hardly. He'd bounce off them. Yeah. yeah. Bobby or when I think of Bobby, Bobby uh, had just, he just had, he had hardly any shoulder pads. It never hurt. And his knees, he, uh, he used to have uh, cotton batten in his knees. I try to tell the guys cotton batten, like what happens? Yeah, we're getting, but what happens is when the guys have the shin pads and they sweat in the shin pads, they have pads inside, but they get hard. They're hard as a rock. So what we used to do is put the cotton batten between that and the heart and the shin pad, like around the knee. And that's what, um, it helps your knee. It really did help your knee. And I, and I try to tell the guys and they, they, you know, cotton batten, forget it. So uh, anyhow, I'd, so, so tell them about tell, the story. Oh, about the story. Okay, okay here's so, the story. I'll tell the story, Cindy. So tell me where I'm wrong. I I probably was wrong. I remember Schmatzi coming in. And he says, "I got a pro- we got a problem." I said, "We got a problem," and I've got nine thousand problems. And he's he's coming in. And I remember him coming in. He says, "Doki doesn't like his pants." How am I doing so far? Well, yeah, I think he said Doki wants a new pair of pants. Oh, I don't know. Doki doesn't like his pants. I can't remember. Doki doesn't like his pants. I said, well, why doesn't he get a new pair? Danny won't give him a new pair. Oh, boy. Now I got Danny. Danny's a trainer. Danny. And you well, you went to the trainer. So why aren't no, you? Oh, he came in. And I called him. And I said, mm-hmm. Danny, he came in. And I'm sitting at my desk. says, give him what he wants. 
this guy is nuts. He will, he'll be back. He won't. I said, just give him what he wants. Who cares if he wants a new pair of pants? So this is this is a big, big thing. So he gives him the I gives him the new pants or whatever with pants. I don't know. So two weeks later, Schmatzi comes in, or was it two weeks or something? Yeah. He came in and he says, We got a problem. Another problem? What's the problem? Like he he was a straw boss. He was doing all the talking. He says, Doki doesn't like his pants. Yeah, he wants his old pants back. <laughs> he wants his old pants back. Now I gotta call Danny in. Danny and Danny's a trainer. I gotta tell him he wants his old pants back. See, I told you. I told. <laughs> so you took all the grief. I oh, told you. I, you I remember it? one time. This is a true story. This 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 is a true story. Honestly, this, this coaches think. So, I I the power play wasn't working. So I called all the power play, and I had a little office, little wee office. You couldn't believe how small it was. Well, you know. And so. I got the. I, I'm telling them what I want you to do is something I forget what it was. I forget what it was. And meanwhile, Danny comes in to tell me a guy's got a broken ankle or something. Meanwhile, Harry phone and Harry Sinden, the general manager, he's sitting above. It was an awful game. We were. I think we won seven five. We were playing awful. And so this is in between. Periods. So I got. I got the power. I, I'm trying to tell a power play and. Harry's on the phone saying this is an awful game, and you know, wonder, and you know, people pay. And I, t- yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yes, mm-hmm, yes, and okay, Harry, I'll try to get the. And I'm trying to tell a power play, and the d- trainer, he's all upset. The guy's got a broken ankle. This is all at once. Trying to tell, listen to Harry, tell a power play, and listen to the trainer at the same time. I think we won the game seven five, but that was a game. You know, you know, I never forgot that game. Now that I think of it. I just happened to hit the TV, and Harry was on. I don't know. Lord works mystery. I hit the, uh, uh, the uh, Minnesota feed, and Harry was saying, how, how did that go? He said, he that, said yeah, yeah. Oh, I know what he said. He said, it's, it's too bad your team, the Minnesota North Stars, don't, doesn't play better in the Boston Cards. And we had them. They'd lose 5-2 or something like that. Well, you, we had a war with them after every game. I name mean, well, but, even after you left, you see they they set a record in Boston, Minnesota, uh, for the brawl like the brawls between Minnesota and Boston. Oh, it, and it all started from Harry Harry going on their television saying he wishes that their team would play better in the Boston Gardens. Hole and and I happened to hit the thing, and it went on. I hit the break, the button went on and the players. Off. Yeah, you, you you hit the switch and it went on the TV in the dressing room and all the players are listening. And the to players are listening. Actually said, and they were they we could beat them in Boston Gardens. We used, never used to lose there. Boy, after that we had a war every time. Well, that's motivation for them. I mean, <laughs> well, that is, oh, and then we did a stupid commercial. Remember that stupid commercial for Lou Nanny? Yeah, that was. I, I look for that on the internet that. Uh, you it was you, Jilly, Jill, Jilly Jill Bear, Bear John Wensink. Was, and was you're Ricky, doing Rick, a commercial to promote well, the well, other. I said I don't think this is a good idea, Harry. Because what happened was Minnesota was in one division, and somebody came into the league, so they moved Minnesota from that division into the, the Adams division. Which oh, is and your it was division. a tough division. So you said on this commercial. You know, uh, you said, hey, guys, guess who's in our division? And they all go, who? And you said, Minnesota. And they all laughed. Ah, ha, ha, Minnesota. Oh, that's and, yeah, oh, yeah, that piece of cake. And then. They, oh, that's a, yeah, you guys better be ready. He, yeah, They're going in the iron. And what, and what Lunan did, he took and played that before. And I said to Harry, I, said, I don't think this is a good idea. Oh, and, Harry's, and I remember he was saying, oh, well, you know, it's to promote the league. We got to promote the league. We got to promote. Yeah, I said, okay. <laughs> Promote the league, and and Lou Nan played it before every game. Because you said, because I remember the the commercial, and again, I, I I look for it on YouTube, and I saw it once. I can't find it again. You said you're in the iron. Listen, Minnesota, you're in the iron of the league now. You better be ready. And then Lou Nan comes on and says, "We'll be ready." And, yeah. And then 
again, just fight after fight hey, after brawl. Remember the pellets, the guy I remember every time there was a, there was always an incident when you guys and played then, the North and, Stars. And Wednesday went over the bench. Remember Wednesday went oh, over the bench? Oh, he challenged the bench. Challenged the oh, whole bench. People, if you want to Google that, that is something to see. He went over to the bench and said, any guy. And, or, and bowed in front of, he bowed in, bowed front, in, of, front, in of front of the and bench. And they wouldn't come on. Uh, and looked at him. But that, but that all started with A, Harry going on the TV in Minnesota saying, you guys don't put up enough fight in Boston. Yeah. And then you did that commercial. <laughs> and that was it. That was it. So, how, did we get it how did we get into that? So talking about Bobby Schmatz and, and things. So, but I'm going to, a couple other things about Bobby Schmatz. He was one of four players that did something in the National Hockey League Man, that nobody did is, is that, who are the two greatest hockey players in the world ever? Well, Bobby Orr is one. And the other one's Wayne Gretzky. Wayne Gretzky, Gretzky. yeah. Bobby Schmatz and three other players were the only guys to play with Bobby Orr and Wayne Gretzky. What were their names? Huh. Uh, Bobby, well, Bobby Schmatz and then Ace Bailey. Ace, yeah. God love him. Yeah, he was. He, uh, he was. He, you know, a lot of people don't realize that he died in uh, uh, Twin Towers. He was on one of the planes. He was on one of the planes with a young uh, uh, scout. Scout from and from if LA. If you had to hit a red light, he'd have missed it. A guy named Jim Harrison from Bonneville, Alberta. Uh, Alberta played for uh, uh, Chicago. Jim Harrison. Jim Harrison had a bad back, and uh, he played for Toronto. I remember uh, he was a pretty good hockey player. He had a, uh, he had a bad back, and uh, Jimmy Harrison, yeah. And then Doug Hicks from Cold Lake, Alberta. are the only four guys that have played with both Bobby Orr and Wayne Gretzky. Oh, I didn't know that. Ace Bailey tells a funny story, or Wayne Gretzky tells a funny story. Like, he, he, he was pretty thin, eh? That Gretzky was pretty thin when he first started out. And he said to Ace Bailey, he said, this guy is always after me all the time. Every time I go on the ice, and he said, look, come over by the bench and, and uh, skate by our bench. And so Gretzky went over and skated by the bench, you know, close to the board. And all of a sudden he heard, whack! And he turned around, and the guy's out cold. And Ace had, had, was sitting on the bench, you know, and and he had his glove on him. So the guy's chasing Wayne. Whack. And he knocked the guy cold. He suckered him as he's going. Suckered him. Suckered him. Suckered, suckered him. And, oh, and another funny story. He wasn't playing in the game. Ace wasn't playing in the game. And they won the championship. Uh, Edmonton Oilers won the championship. And uh, Ace went in and put all his equipment on and went, went in the shower and put his head and let on he was sweating. And, and Gretzky's skating around outside and he thinks, Geez, I don't remember him, but his hair's all wet. He, I don't remember him playing, and and looked like he was one of the guys. And that was a good idea. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I it remember Ace, Ace used to wear a a, a, tur a white turtleneck. I remember he tried out for our team. He, yeah, yeah. He He's a, a good looking guy. I remember you know, the white turtleneck. And you know, they say a guy's always got a smile on his face. You know, everybody. He really had a smile on his face the whole time. He was a positive guy, and uh, everywhere he went. Didn't was, Wayne Gretzky used to wear a white turtleneck every now and well, then? Well, one time, but yeah. Ace used to wear one all the time. Harry didn't. I, I, they didn't fit in, and he would have fit in. I think he would have fit in in our club, perfect. Yeah, he was like a fourth line penalty killer. He was yeah, he would. He had been a penalty killer. Him and Davy Forbes. Dad, there was quite a stir on the internet. Brandon Dubinsky who uh, actually had a couple of fights with Crosby. And he, had, he always had something going with Crosby, and he had a good fight with Ovechkin. He said he'd take Ovechkin over Crosby any time. No, I, I, I like Crosby, and I'll tell you why I like Crosby. is that Well, first of all, the rumor was that he took a – he didn't he – did, no, he should have a lot. He should get – he was the best hockey player in the world for a long time. Remember when he first started out, he was like McDavid, he was getting a lot of penalties, and he was arguing with guys and referees, and, and all of a sudden he said, whoa, wait a minute. These guys are trying to get me off the ice. And that's what they try to do with McDavid, try to get him. and uh, That's why he uh, elbowed. That's why he got that elbow. elbow. I mean, you know, he's, he's sick, sick of it. He's just sick of the whole thing. He's sick of losing. He's sick of <laughs> everybody running at him. Guys running at him. But Crosby all of a sudden said, "Whoa, wait a minute!" And you know, Orpek. I think it was. The, I think that was the. the yeah. Boy, did Orpek ever hit a memory spun? And I and I'm the only guy. Well, naturally, I'm the only guy at well, television. Yeah, that was. Uh, people don't remember. It was. It was the outdoor game. Remember? Oh, that's right too. Yeah. And uh, Crosby never had really. He didn't have too many injuries before then. No, he didn't have. He did. And I don't think he. I don't think he had an. Uh, 
it, a concussion. Yeah, and I think I think it was like uh, the whistle blew, and he was going east, and Orpik was, go- Orpik was going west. <laughs> and I said, I come on television. I said he did that on purpose. He did that on purpose. Well, first of all, if you hit a guy and going off, and the whistle like it was just at the end of the whistle, I mean. Orpec didn't even look back. Yeah, like if you run into a guy if you're by running, accident. You'll, at least you look back. Yeah. And I remember Crosby spinning around. I mean, he uh, that, that, he, he, he got really his shoulder hurt. right in his jaw. Right in the jaw. No, I, I, I like uh, Ovechkin. Don't get me wrong. And this is not to put Ovechkin down because he's going to win this uh, uh, Maurice Richard trophy again. So this is not putting him down. But I question, I, I always like Crosby. I always did. I even liked him when he was running around giving everybody. And all of a sudden, he, 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 he smartened up. And that's what McDavid better, you know, that's what he'll do. He'll mm-hmm. smarten up too. Well, people don't realize, and you remember this, Cindy, that you, you had a running feud with. with well, that's what I was just going to say. I remember when, when he first came into the league and, and you were criticized for criticizing or mentioning about. Tim Hortons, I remember Tim Hortons. Well, the story was that Tim Hortons went to the, he said, wait a minute, hey, we're paying Crosby all this money, our star, he's our star, and he still is the star. Remember, he, d- he drives the Zamboni. He said, and then you got your star criticizing him. I said, I'm telling the truth. What and were he, you saying about him? Well, I was saying about him, he st- stopped giving the referees heck. Stop. Uh, stopped I think you said whining, was that the whining word Whining all used? the time, and, and, um. Uh, but after Orpec, he, he's. <laughs> but any and, and so I and you know I did Subban too. I was called a racist, and I was I known Subban. I liked Subban since uh, the deep. I mean he a terrific defenseman. I just said he he didn't belong in Montreal. And yeah, now and, he, and for people that say you you stuck up for him when uh, Babcock didn't want to take him over to the Olympics. Oh yeah, and and, and you, know, you said you won the Norris Trophy. You got to take him, and Babcock just said, No, I'm not taking him. Babcock, the story goes that uh, he did not want uh, St. Louis, Martin yep, St. Martin Louis, Louis. Yep. and he did not want uh, Subban. So they said, wait a minute, hold it. He, he went, one wins the scoring title, and one is, one's the best defenseman. And you say you don't want them? He said, well, I don't care. Send them over. And I was at the practice where he told uh, St. Louis he wasn't playing that night, and he went right off the ice. St. Louis went right off the ice. And he told Saban, but Saban's pretty, Saban's pretty smart. He just stayed on the ice and, and everything like that. But he didn't play them. Can I, I ask you, did you take offense when Saban was imitating you on the commercial? No, I thought it was great. Because a lot of people were worried, like, oh, what did your dad think of Saban making fun of your dad and all that? But oh, he, I, I liked when he said, well, he's not or. Well, he's not or. <laughs> he had, I got to tell you, folks, you should Google that if you hadn't seen it. He had you down pat. Man, he really did. He did, and you know what? He's going to be great on television. He after. is. You could yeah. see he has a future in television. Yeah, he, he, yeah, and and he's playing good this year. He's playing okay this but year. But getting back to Sidney Crosby, didn't he in the beginning when he broke into the league? Didn't he sort of hot dog it too a little bit? And you told nah, him. Well, I remember he he did he. Uh, now that you bring it up, he did score a goal that one of those lacrosse ones that you know from behind. Oh, that was it. Yeah, and. and um, I th- think of the kid's mother and dad watching that there, and and, and you know what? He, he made a fool out of the goalie. He never did it again, though. Yeah, he made a fool out of the goalie. That's yeah, what you were mad at. Yeah, the looking around for the buckets. Well, know, there but. was it, it. It was a big issue there when you criticized him because he was the golden boy back then. And, oh yeah, well, and he's still the golden boy. Still the golden boy. So but, anyhow, getting well, back. Well, they to, even got mad at you calling him the golden boy. Remember that? I, Remember that, Tim? They were they were upset because you said, "Oh, the golden boy." That's how you referred to him, and they did. They even took offense well, to that. Well, I, I think the other thing, too, is, uh, well, you gave it to Ovechkin pretty good. About oh, that Ovechkin, th- yeah, when he burnt, when he scored that goal, and he dropped a stick, and he let on it was on fire. Oh, Oh, no. and, and th- there was the, I, I felt, I said, think of the kid, think of the kid in the goal, how he felt. It was, he was a rookie. Was he a rookie? Yeah, his name was Mike McKinnon. He was a rookie. And uh, uh, somebody just did an article on him, and he and he he was quoted. I was mad. I was mad about it. I feel like I was already embarrassed enough. I'm a first year player trying to do my best out here, and this guy's crushing me. 
I honestly think if I'd been more comfortable in the league, I would have slashed that stick into the next zip code. Know what I mean? But you're in the moment re- reaction. You're mad. And I just want, I was just what the m- moment really. And then he goes, I wasn't surprised that the media criticized him. This is McKenna saying it. It's funny. Don Cherry defended my dignity in hockey night in Canada. I never expected my name being mentioned by Don Cherry. So and once again, I must you're have been the pretty only, famous back then. I know, but they value your opinion, and you you were the only one that would uh, call guys famous yeah. stars on. But I, I like Ovechkin. You're right, Cindy. You're you you're, you're right. I I. But like, if you were like right now, you would take Crosby over Ovechkin. I'd take Crosby. I I think the world of Crosby. Uh, you know what? He's a back checker. He back checks, and uh, he scores goals, and. Um, uh, and he's tough. Uh, and he and he's tough. He, t- he, gets, he and, but he's he learned. He learned, and McDavid will learn. There's no sense of going after guys getting fined five thousand dollars. I know that's pocket money to, to those guys. They make it. I mean, I think he makes more than five thousand a game. Yeah. Oh, he makes more than that. But oh no, he makes more. Than he, but anyhow, you just don't do that stuff. And he'll learn like Crosby. It, well, I think it took Crosby about. Four or five years before yeah. he, you don't do that stuff because you're going to have to take the abuse. If you're the best player, Bobby Orr took it. The only thing is he gave it out. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the thing is, too, as you said, Crosby in his whole career, only once was he a minus player, and he, that was minus one. And Ovechkin's been minus, I think, five or six times in his career. Yeah, I, I and uh, Dale Hunter told him that he had to be a, to be a hockey player. You have to. But, uh, hey, I'll tell you. Well, he can score those goals from that right point. I don't understand why guys don't get over them. But he's smart. He'll go and stand in front of the net. Uh, uh, you know, he's, he's pretty smart. He's, he stands in front of the net. If they start going there, he'll go and stand. He's a good goal scorer. He can put the puck in the net. But the best scorer I ever saw, pure scorer, was Mike Bossy. Mike Bossy from, I mean, he could. Yeah, he, for the Islanders, he was uh People don't know. He was the second player in history to get 50 goals in 50 games. I remember he got it, and uh, he, 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 was the, he was the best scorer I ever saw. He, uh, well, Phil wasn't bad either. He got 65 goals. Funny thing is, they never talk about Phil Esposito, eh, Tim? No. He's he kind of 76 f- goals, and he says, he says, oh, that's really exceptional. You know that, And he must think, wait a minute, I got 76. Of course, there was a lot of tip-ins with Bobby shot from the point. But 76 goals. And then he got 65 goals the next game. 65, you know, and he said, well, you're having a bad year. Well, wouldn't, he, wouldn't you think that if he had been on any other team that he would have been shown, he would have shown a lot more? Well, he went to New York. What oh, that's got? right. And what, yeah, I think he got 30. I mean. So yeah, he did he get just, a lot of rebounds. Yeah, it was just for some reason he, he, well, you know, but I always say that hockey doesn't, hockey's not like baseball or football that kind of takes their older players and, Hold, hold them in reverence. The NHL doesn't no. do that. They they do a very poor job doing that. They like Phil Esposito. I'm not, you know Phil Esposito. I traded him, but he still got 65 goals. And then, you know what they said after? Is well, you're having a bad year. He got 76 goals a year before. I just don't. I Phil Esposito. When, boy, you put the puck in front of the net, you get the rebound. What did they have? They had uh, they had on their bumpers all the time. Oh, that's right. What did they say? Jesus says, but Espo gets the rebound. Yeah, it's yeah. all over Boston. Yeah, all over Boston. That was on that was on the T-shirt. Yeah, he was. And people don't realize that if you're, you're not from Boston, that Boston has a very large uh, Italian um, and pop, Irish uh, Irish, but they have a very large Italian oh, yeah. population, and they just love Phil. Oh yeah. And I I go tell one last story. I know we're going a little long here. I I have such fun doing this. I, I'm going to tell a story. I don't know. Maybe, oh, well, what I care. So I'm on the bench, and this guy, and across the bench, up, uh, I would say, 30 rows, he's giving it to Phil. You can't believe. Every time, and, and Phil used to, he used to be upset about the shot clock. Remember the shot clock? Oh, I'm, yes. I'm getting off. But anyhow, this guy used to give, used to give Phil and because you have to realize it was screen it wasn't glass then it was screen behind it was right and I remember this guy and I, I said this guy this guy's giving it to you Phil and you haven't and um, so the next game no guy the guy wasn't there and I said to Cash I said Cash Wayne Cashman I said what whatever happened to that guy he said don't ask <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it was a tough town. And then they had the gallery gods. Remember that? The gallery oh, yeah. gods up above. And yeah. they, they, it, was, it was a great time. We had a great. And that Boston Gardens, it was, it was like you could, you could whisper and you could hear. It was, it was a fight. Uh, it was for fights, eh? Yeah, they built it originally for boxing. And that's why you're like literally like it was terrifying walking. Uh, yeah, the, s- it was steep. So, so steep. The steepness of oh, it. Oh, yeah. And that was because so you could sit. It's like you go to the games now and, you know, the person that's well, sitting for, in front of you. They're made for basketball. Is that it? Well, I don't know. F- basketball people have to see too. Is that the pe- person that's sitting in front of you? You're looking at the back of their head. Yeah. But in the gardens, you you could see they were they were down lower. There was only one stadium that had steeper. I I, I was up in it. Was the Hershey, or the old Hershey, and boy, you could see any place at all. You could see the game, uh, like, and it was so steep that you're up above. If you ever trip, you're dead. Yeah, but nobody a, ever fell, and uh, and was, they drank in Boston too. Oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> oh boy, did we, did we, did we, did we? Yeah, drink during the game. I mean, that was. You know, I must tell a story next week about Bronco Horvath. Uh, but uh, Bronco, uh, we got a lot of letters. You be you never mentioned Bronco Horvath and oh I I want to tell a story about um, okay I guess we got to go but anyhow I'll tell a story next next week about Bronco Horvath I want to end with Bobby Schmott scoring the biggest goal I remember was right along the ice he just zipped her home on Kenny Dryden and when was it uh, what what game was it uh, game four the seventy eight uh, Montreal was up two games to one and this one tied her up yeah and he put her in and and this is Bobby Schmott's yeah I loved him. Shot wide. Here's Schmott trying to clear it. Robinson spot. Blocked by Clark. Up to Shepard with Blockrock. Shepard moving in. Shepard with Clark. Keep it going. 